we are all a little depraved and debaucherous. Here is the king of podcasts. It's been a couple of weeks and maybe it's about due time to go and talk more about sugar daddies and sugar babies and sugar dating. Yeah, even in the holidays, people just can't help themselves but be in the gift of giving. The season of giving. But, of course, there are those that want to go ahead and be given in the worst ways to scam one another in this holiday season. So we're going to talk about that because there's quite a few stories coming out about it that are very interesting. And by the way, of course, there's always so much press about how many women that become sugar babies that go on to these sugar, ba- sugar day sites and they're getting scammed right off the bat. Oh, let me give you a gift card. Well, let me go ahead and have you send money to my cash app. And then I send it back to you. Or let me send me a check or what's your bank account number? All these different things that are going on. Now, if you need me to go and remind you, you know, let me not go any further than talk about when we did Confessions of a Sugar Daddy, right? Remember when we talked all about that and we did the whole story about the scams that will be put through? Well, we're going to go through some actual examples of these right here. So let's go into that part and let me go play back our confidential informant, the JL, who talked about this on a previous episode. If you're new to the Sugar Daddy website and you go on to one of these sites seeking arrangement, Sugar Baby, Sugar Daddy, there's a bunch of them. When you're going on there, the first thing that's going to happen when you're a Sugar Baby on the site is you're going to get scams. You're going to have guys on there or whoever there is that are going to try to say, hey, go ahead and give me your cash app and then I'm going to send you money back to your cash app to send back to me or a bank deposit or, you know, something where you're giving them the account number so you can give your, uh, the, go ahead and transfer money into the account. If you're going to do anything with payment at all, you want to make sure that as a sugar baby, you're taking it from three different payment sources and that's it. You want it to be PayPal or to just get your email, cash app where it's just your dollar username on there and that's it. And I would say Venmo. Because those ways, you can get the money to your bank account, and you can get it to an account or a balance where you can transfer it. And it's just real simple like that. So that's what we were talking about with JL before. That was back, again, that was February 15th when we did that episode. And ever since, we have the ongoing scams that are going on. But what are those scams? Now, we heard, we heard about that one Canadian uh, pre-med student. But there are more than that right now. So let's go into that. The age of the sugar daddy scammer. Now, this is the common stories that we see from uh, ID, uh, advi- the vice column and ID, vice.com. And they talk about fake sugar daddies are everywhere. And Lily Bonessa writes a story back in October. Lily talks about having an Instagram dis- direct message where a sugar daddy was offering 5000 a week in exchange for nothing but companionship. My first thought is this must be a scam. So... She decides to entertain this for the next hour. She goes ahead and asks, well, this is a very sweet offer. How exactly would this work? And then this guy named Sean, who goes by Sean, replies and says, I'm looking for someone loyal and trustworthy who I can share my thoughts and feelings with. Someone to give you a touch and in return for your spools and support. As my baby, all daddy requires from you is your attention and advice. Can you do that? Now, the language that's being used in this has some poor language, poor grammar, hackneyed phrases, and it has some textbook kink language. Moving along, the story talks about a psychological term named mirroring, describing our unconscious imitation of body language, facial expressions, and tone of voice during social interactions, which is part of the pickup game, pickup artist game, if you remember that back in the day. So she was mimicking Sean's language to increase her chances of receiving money. And in some ways, in such a transactional relationship, it might even feel odd to be your real self. Now, she spoke with a sugar baby, a non-binary artist and model, Isaac Looker, discussing the performative element of this dynamic. Quote, my sugar daddy found out about me when I was touring with my band. They later told me that they used to all buy all our records and come to every show. So it was a performer that was very interested in me, they tell me. And our relationship is something of a performance. I guess they are aware of it, and maybe that's part of the fantasy as well. That fictionalized person who is unrealistically amazing. But she finds red flags. 
So moving along into the discussion, she's asked to send photos of herself in return. And she says no pics before payment. So there's a screenshot of a PayPal payment of $5,000. And she knows this is something usual, payment method voucher. A quick check on PayPal FAQs confirms that PayPal doesn't use vouchers for international transactions. So he tells her, you'll have to purchase a $100 international voucher to verify your pending payment. She tries to say this is not how PayPal works. He replies, what are you trying to say? That I'm lying to you? And then she goes on and says that because of the approach of the course of the conversation, that there was some kind of relationship. And she started to feel uncomfortable, screenshot of the chat, and blocked him. Now, she goes along and talks to Isaac, and he goes along to say, or he or she, goes along to say that there is a dream of just having a sugar daddy and not having to do anything in exchange, but you have to put a lot of effort in. At the very least, it requires constant texting and regular calls. It can be very emotionally training. Oh, it is a female. Usually the best outcome is that they want sexy videos and nudes, but even that is rare. And most of the time it only lasts so long until they want something physical. Both sugar babies I speak with point out that this is a sex work. It's a saturated market and no one is handing out cash for free. Still, I had to admit the I enjoyed the temporary delusion. Part of me really hoped that money would have appeared in my PayPal. She was mentioning she was also getting uh, uh, her hair done at what, like $300 a pop. Just making that point too. So, you know, enjoying her lifestyle. Now, besides that story, then we have a couple of stories about sugar daddies explaining what sugar babies are doing. Now, we, we've explained the scams. And by the way, if you're looking for stories about sugar daddies scam suppose it's sugar daddies scamming sugar babies right men scamming women there's plenty of those stories but i'm going to give you a couple of stories that have just come out recently that you probably haven't heard about of sugar daddies talking about the scams that are being put on them let's talk about that now there was a reddit ask me anything column from a self proclaimed sugar daddy who goes by username southern hyphen air 5484 53 year old and he wrote i've been a sugar daddy for over 20 years with multiple women ask me anything and there about 1300 comments came on uh, came across the board now in the story he says he's 53 years old in los angeles holds a phd in history and counted as first sugar baby at 30 years old so 2000 now he got a big after getting involved with the internet startup in the 90s the financial windfall was sizable enough that properly invested he's barely had to work over the decades the original poster says i live on the beach in malibu so yes i'm wealthy but i'm not a billionaire or anything unaware his wealth originated he says i was lucky enough to be a part of an internet startup that blew up when we went public back in the 90s now moving along he's answering questions let's get into a couple of them how much money do you pay to each girl and he says it varies a great deal based on who they are and what they are open to as far as the arrangement goes. I've had never had a long-term arrangements where they live with me full time as my girlfriend, all the way to just the meet and greet, just to get to know each other. It's a really wide open range. And as JL would tell you, he would say you never go for a long term, nothing more than six months, maybe a year at the most. So the girls who live with me, I paid for their college and provided enough that they build a nest egg for their future. There were three long-term arrangements I had, and it was understood that I expected them to go and pursue their dreams when they finished school. All three are still very good friends. And another person asks, do you get feelings towards them at all? He says, I feel very deeply towards them and treasure them in my heart always. But to want to hold on to someone and not allow them to grow and move forward to pursue a life that they dream of just is wrong. I want them to achieve dreams just beyond just me and our relationship. And I think there's something wrong with that. I mean, for some guys... I'll put it to you like this. The reason that some of the sugar daddy stuff is becoming a thing now is because for guys that don't want to be involved at all in a serious relationship or a marriage because of how things have turned out, the dating scene we've talked about in the on the program, it is shit. It's no good. And the amount, the amount of money that you're going with someone that you think you're going to get into a relationship with, the attachment, the investment, it's not worth it. Unless you really find a woman that is sincerely interested in that and it's not just for a cash grab. So what do you do next? Well, you move along and say, okay, well, some guys still want to have that attachment. They want to still have some kind of emotional connection with a woman. So 
they're going to pay for access for the youngest, most attractive, and ambitious, and maybe open and pliable and vulnerable, and maybe still feels like there's hope in finding good relationships for whatever reason, why they're not in relationships and why they're struggling or why they haven't found anyone that would tell to mentor them and push them towards their dreams. So that's what he's doing. He's using what he can to be what you could say is philanthropic. Now we move along and find out what he has when he talks about this. Now, what's your type? He says, beautiful, smart, strong willed, just crazy enough to put with me, put up with me. And someone where a long silence feels like joy, joy shared. Now, another asks, would you ever consider someone who is not super beautiful, but smart, funny, nice, and talented, or are looks the ultimate threshold of getting her foot in the door? He writes, looks might get someone in the door, but smart, funny, nice, and talented is the only way the door remains open. And let's be honest, if you have those, then beauty truly comes from inside. And when he talked about how to meet his girls, he said, first, I would not advise to go on seeking.com. It was a wonderful resource, resource at one point he says, but it's pretty much filled with scammers and escorts at this point. If you're not in a large urban area with many available men, then maybe Tinder is a better option. That's worked well for me. Just use a phrase like love to be spoiled or another hint like that in your profile. But online is really not what it used to be for both ends of the arrangement. And he talks about how he's in LA bars and clubs are well known for the sugar scene. The polo lounge and the Beverly Hills hotel is filled with models and actresses looking for a daddy. A lot of self-confidence is needed on your part. to Just walk and conquer the room. But he's had other strange places where he's met women, the cute barista who always flirted with, the cashier at my local supermarket, just a beautiful girl whose eyes met mine and struck up a conversation with me. As an older man who seems to be well off, just strike up a conversation to see how it goes. Only an idiot thinks a young hot girl is flirting with him when he is twice her age and not expecting something in return. So that's what he does. Pretty straight up, pretty simple. But when he talks about what's going on with the changes, right? You're talking about all the issues that are going on with the scammers. And he specifically talked about seeking, but there are other sites out there too. But let's talk about that part. There have been scams going on that you might not even know about. The one that's gotten a little bit of press, it's only on other Euro European sources, by the way, but I had to go looking around for it, but I saw it on a Google search. There was a woman that was arrested recently for selling a book on how to scam sugar daddies. And the book actually sold 20, 2000 copies, a 25 year old woman. Her, she is from Nagoya, Japan. Her name is Mai Watanabe claimed to be an expert in swindling men. She decided to put her expertise in a guide for other young women. The book is called textbook for sugar babies, the right profile and magical words to make men pay. Now, the book talks about how to approach middle-aged men who are deemed vulnerable to extract as much as money as possible. This is basically a pay pig looking for a simp. And we've talked about simps on the program, and that's one of the things you have to think about here as well. So one of the books asked users to tell their sugar daddies that they had difficult, a difficult upbringing to win their compassion to get money. Fabricating a story about being sick and unable to work and saying that he desperately needed assistance with rent payments, another strategy. Well, this is actually common. A lot of women will actually put those kind of profiles on these sugar daddy sites. She so started selling her scamming instructions last year between what was equivalent to 67 and $134. Exclusive lessons were available for an extra charge, according to the sources from the Naka Police Department in Japan. And police launched an investigation through activities after arresting a 20-year-old woman who allegedly defrauded two men for a total of $72,000 from using tactics from Watanabe's books. So this young lady put this out here to then pass along the secrets here, supposedly, to get other women to do criminal acts because this girl was found. So another suspect who was called Riri the sugar baby turned out to be an experienced paid dating expert accused of taking over $180,000 from a 50 year old man in September. And she told the man that she would then borrow money from a friend to open her clothing store. And she would have to sell her body at a brothel to repay the loan. 
and new charges were published following an accusation by a 54 year old man that said Riri also scammed him out of a total of $780,000, $780,000. And the victim believed his scammer used guidelines from Watanabe's books. How about that? But this is what they're talking about. It's really weird. <coughs> it's going on here, but yeah, another story that comes out and I'm like, that's not good. So from another story I'm taking from this, well, same story I found was just a uh, repeated, but you know what I'm saying? Do you like the idea of the scamming like this and, and the idea that it's not going on either way? But the thing is that there's something to be said about how some women that will go on these sites, number one, they're trying to also, in some cases, look for actual relationships if there's that out there. But there's still something to be said about where women are still trying to go and look to be propped up in some cases. Let's just be honest about that. It really does happen like that. Now, I do believe there are some women that really are being sincere. And when you meet them, then, you know, you can actually talk. And I think there are certain occasions when you find a girl or a guy that you meet that might be sincerely interested in a relationship. And maybe you pass off and pass on the whole idea of being transactional or being it where it's an arrangement. Because the guys that are looking out for the girls here, they're not really looking for an arrangement. They don't really care. They just want companionship in some way, shape, or form. And if they have the means to go ahead and fly a girl in or they go fly over there, or, you know, they can have that companion to go out and go out with. And they don't want to go to another country and do the passport bros thing and have to go ahead and just try to meet someone. And in some cases, let's, let's put this out there too. The passport bros idea, while it is sounds very enticing, I'm going to tell you like this, where you need to go to find these women are not necessarily safe areas. You go at your own risk. When they talk about you go to the Philippines, Thailand, Dominican Republic, Colombia, Venezuela, all those places, it's still not America. It's not Canada. It's not Puerto Rico. It's just, it's different. And that's the part where people need to realize that is very there's a, a convenience of trying to find women here that are still American girls that you can meet and, and go for. Or, or how about Africa? People don't realize how much that, that there are African women that are also being looked at to be finding sugar daddies, you know, plus the intent on some women feeling like they could use this route to be a mail order bride, find their way to get a passport, get a visa, get away into the country, find citizenship. We know that also happens well. But what do you say to yourself? Like, what do you do now to bring all this about? The truth is there are a lot of guys that are doing this because of the option of meeting women that are at least honest about what they're looking for. Because what we don't like are the women that are not being honest with us and they're being under nefarious motives saying, oh, I'm looking for a relationship. I'm looking to meet a friend and they get together and it's more of just a cash grab than anything else. Like it's just an ulterior motive. It's worse. We've talked about the 48 oysters girl. We talked about, you know, the girl with a rock that got hit with a rock, right? Roe bash, all these different things of women with ulterior motives going out with guys with no, one, with no idea of being able to go ahead and providing anything close to what the guy was looking for. If he invests the time, the effort, the resources and his heart eventually into a woman. I mean, it's already bad enough for some guys, you know, there's women that will do only fans and do virtual things, do like private Snapchats, things like that to just try to go and make it a couple extra bucks. Like, remember some of this is just where women will just come out. And if you go into these sugar daddy sites, there are quite a few women that will go ahead and they'll sell you one of two things that it's absolutely a cash grab. It's absolutely bills paid, student loans paid, better lifestyle. Those things are going on. The other part is, is that they are looking for women are looking for alternatives from the relationships they came out of that were also detrimental and abusive and bad because what happens with the dates is that we have women and men on both sides, narcissistic, manipulative, controlling, scheming, 
scamming. The scamming goes along as well in the traditional conventional relationships. We know that. It's not anybody for anybody else. So what are you going to do about it? Like the reason even I ever delved into the sugar daddies is because I found women that were quality women that you could probably talk to, have a conversation with at least. And then if you realize, okay, they really are pushing for like, you know, for you to go and unload your pockets, then yeah, you cut them all loose. And some might get upset because, you know, the other thing too, that is the appeal for guys to go onto these sugar daddy sites is because the women now become the chasers. Like you're the hunted. You're the, uh, you're the one that has appeal. So you can be whatever look you want. You can be average looking, anything like that. But because of what means you have, women will reach out if they want to talk to you. And if they can find you locally and they can bring you on board, then that's what happens. But there's a lot of that there. And again, It doesn't even have to apply necessarily to the sugar daddy sites. I mean, Tinder, as this guy said, that's also a place where women will meet for sugar dating. Now, any woman will go ahead and, and you know, if they're damaged and they're on these sugar daddy sites or the, or the dating apps in general, they're also looking out to try to get paid or they're just trying to go ahead and get themselves supported. Nothing wrong with that. But the sugar daddy site is at least you are aware of what you're looking or getting yourself into. And you can be clear in the profile pictures of some of the women that you'll realize, okay, she's kind of like acting like an influencer. Look, she's, you know, in front of a very expensive plate of food or she's in, you know, vacationing in a bikini or she's driving a nice car or just, you know, doing status seeking, just kind of looking a certain way. Look at me in my outfit. Look, here's my outfit for the day. Look at me in front of the mirror. Here's my selfie. Here's this and that. Look at my hair getting done. Here's the night where I went out and did Halloween or here's the night when I went out and got out of town or, you know, it was a nice cocktail party or it was a wedding, whatever. And women will find ways to go and use their best looks at the times they were able to do that. And then put pictures up to go and show, Hey, I want to look like this all the time. I want to feel like this all the time. So those kind of things are going on very rampant and very common. Is it good? I don't know, but a lot of women are on there for that reason. And there are a lot of women single on those sites, believe it or not, because they've also been miffed. They've been scorned by too many guys that were just fuck boys that wanted to just go ahead and take the girl for a ride. And that was it. And only have them for situationships or just for the fuck. And that was it. And then you move along and then, okay, well, these women don't want to have that anymore. Then they get that whole mindset of like, well, I want a lifestyle. I want, you know, independent. I don't want a guy to, some women will just, you know, they'll look down on the fact that they're going to have a guy support them. They won't look at it like that. They're just going to say, well, you're just going to give me what I want. It's still a support system. And some women are feeling the idea. Well, I only, not only do I want to go have somebody support me, I don't want to do anything for it. So guys, you have to remember as JL said before, when you go on here, maybe you'll find luck, but you'll more than likely find the bare minimum. Does that make sense? Because that's what it is. One other story I want to bring up before we wrap things up, a story from Psychology Today, a story that came out about why Caspering is a better than ghosting a, a romantic feature. So here we know now a new phrase into the dating lexicon into your dating vocabulary, add Caspering. Now, Casper, as in Casper the Friendly Ghost. It's a cartoon from back in the day. Hanna-Barbera, you know, one of those things is very noticeable. If you go look up Casper, you'll hear that. And of course, you've heard the Casper matches, but that's not the same thing. Casper is in Casper the Friendly Ghost. Caspering is a, friend, a polite type of ghosting referring to the gradual weaning of communication in a failed relationship. And you know what? I have been subject to this and I have done this too. I think I'm an expert at Caspering. The gradual like, okay, you pay attention, you do the effort, you might make effort to go and talk to a girl and you realize, okay, she's not answering back. And, you know, guys like me, and you also done out there, guys as well. Like you'll try to go and reach back out after a couple of days. You know, we're all been taught 
Like the dating game used to be, okay, you meet a girl, you don't call her that night. You wait, right? You kind of just say, okay, I'll wait a couple of days to reach back out. And then you reach out, hey, and then when you're going to reach out to her, the dating game would say, okay, when you text her, don't just ask about how she's doing, set up plans to meet up. So, okay, hey, I hope you're doing good. I'd like to take you out Friday night. Let's go out ice skating. Let's go out to dinner. Let's go to a movie. Let's go to a game. And you create the plans and then give her the option. Tell me what you think. What time you want me to pick you up or what time you want to meet up? Like you create the plan for the girl. So all she has to do is say, okay, yeah, that sounds cool. And then you set it up and you go out. And then you start the process of getting to know the girl in person and go that route. But when you're doing the texting part, you know, there's obviously other people that we're all talking to. You never know who it is you're talking to that eventually will be like, all right, there's nothing here. And then you realize if that person isn't texting you back regularly or like they're not initiating the conversation, that just slows down. And then eventually you're like, especially if you're on a dating app or if you're on a sugar daddy site, you're always looking for the next woman that hopefully is going to be the right girl that you're looking for. Cause guys do that. As you know, guys, we're logical. We're like, we're not going to put our eggs in one basket, expecting the girl to write back to us when that's normally not what she's going to do. We're going to keep putting our eggs in other baskets and keep trying to work that route. The next best thing, the next best thing while waiting for maybe the good thing coming out of one of these connections. But if it doesn't happen, why even bother? So, we continue to look because you know what happens on these dating sites? New women pop up there all the time on sugar dating sites. New women pop up there all the time. There's a feature on all these where you get like the newest profiles. And that's what we all do. We click the next day. Sometimes you might find sites that will actually just populate the next set of women or guys. And it just drops right in. And then there, and those women will get that first initial response right off the bat. And they're probably more likely to go ahead and respond back to you because of the fresh connection. So it may offer a way to maintain the dignity and self-respect of both parties. Caspering can prevent a sense of closure that may help heal people heal. So in a culture of fleeting connections and casual encounters, Caspering might offer respite from the harshness of ghosting, emphasizing the importance of acknowledging the powerful emotions involved in dating and seeks to maintain the dignity and self-respect of both parties. Yeah, you're just not paying attention anymore. So there's communication versus silence. That's an aspect of this. Death with dignity. So you're just kind of closing it off, not paying attention. And I respect you enough to conclude a relationship thoughtfully. And in the story, a Jordan Travers here, a licensed clinical social worker, writes that opting for Caspering instead of ghosting provides a straightforward yet impactful means to infuse empathy into your dating etiquette. Underscoring that each individual in the dating equation merits kindness, respect, and the dignity of closure, even when a romantic connection doesn't endure. And one of the things I remember reading from Dr. Robert Glover's book, you know, the, either the, the, the men's guide to dating or the nice guys, uh, and how, no more Mr. Nice Guy, one of the things he would tell you in his work is that, okay, if you don't find anything with a woman that you're with or you don't find a connection and you just bail out, you make a polite gesture. I hope you find what you're looking for. And that's it. It's not a way to go. That's not a bad way to go. So maybe that was a good idea for some of those out there that when you're on these sugar daddy sites or you're out dating, Hey, you know, the praise and debauchers king of podcasts.com. If you haven't subscribed to the show, please go to my YouTube page at king of podcasts. You can also see it linked at king of podcasts.com and also where the show gets distributed, but closing out the show. I'm just telling you, that when you are deciding to go ahead and get out of really of this, you know, a conversation that's not going anywhere. Fine. What you can do is say, okay, well, I hope you find what you're looking for. And maybe I hope you'll find someone that'll be more to your liking. That is depraved and debaucherous. 